Okay, so Diggory is explaining how he thinks that they're in a place that is a world like a place where it isn't really part of anything. It's just kind of a place that's in the middle between pools. And if you go between pools, then you'll be able to get there. And Polly said, well, even if you can, and of course he didn't listen to her, so we'll pick up there. And of course that explains everything he said. That's why it is so quiet and sleepy here. Nothing ever happens here, like at home. It's in the houses that people talk and do things and have meals. Nothing goes on in the in-between places, behind the walls and above the ceilings, or under the floor, or in our own tunnel. But when you come out of our tunnel, you may find yourself in the any house. I think we can get out of this place and did jolly well anywhere. We don't need to jump back into the same pool we came up by, or not just yet. The wood between worlds, said Polly dreamily. It sounds rather nice. Come on, said Diggory. Which pool shall we try? Look here, said Polly. I'm not going to try any new pool till we've made sure that we can get back by the old one. We're not even sure if it'll work yet. Yes, said Diggory, and get caught by Uncle Andrew and have our rings taken away before we've had any fun. No thanks. Couldn't we just go part of the way down into our pool, said Polly, just to see if it works? Then if it does, we'll change rings and come up again before we're really back in Mr. Ketterly's study. Can we go part of the way down? Well, it took time coming up. I suppose it'll take a little time going back. Diggory made rather a fuss about agreeing to this. But he had to in the end because Polly absolutely refused to do any exploring in new worlds until she had made sure about getting back to the old one. She was quite as brave as he about some dangers, wasps for instance, but she was not so interested in finding out things nobody had ever heard of before. For Diggory was the sort of person who wants to know everything, and when he grew up he became the famous Professor Kirk who comes into other books. After a good deal of arguing, they agreed to put on their green rings. Green for safety, said Diggory, so you can't help remembering which is which, and hold hands and jump. But as soon as they seem to be getting back to Uncle Andrew's study, or even to their own world, Polly was to shout, change, and they would slip off their greens and put on their yellows. Diggory wanted to be the one who shouted change, but Polly wouldn't agree. They put on the green rings, took hands, and once more shouted, one, two, three, go. This time it worked. It is very hard to tell you what it felt like, for everything happened so quickly. At first, there were bright lights moving about in a black sky. Diggory always thinks these were stars, and even swears that he saw Jupiter quite close close enough to see its moon. But almost at once there were rows and rows of roofs and chimney pots about them, and they could see St. Paul's and knew they were looking at London. But you could see through the walls of all the houses. Then they could see Uncle Andrew, very vague and shadowy, but getting clearer and more solid looking all the time, just as if he were coming into focus. But before he became quite real, Polly shouted, change and they did change and the green light above grew stronger and stronger till their heads came out of the pool and they scrambled ashore and there was the wood all about them as green and bright and still as ever the whole thing had taken less than a minute there said diggory that's all right now for the adventure any pool will do come on let's try that one stop said polly Aren't we going to mark this pool? They stared at each other and turned quite white as they realized the dreadful thing that Diggory had just been going to do. For there were any number of pools in the wood, and the pools were all alike, and the trees were all alike, so that if they had once left behind the pool that led to our own world without making some sort of landmark, the chances would have been a hundred 
to one against their ever finding it again. Diggory's hand was shaking as he opened his penknife and cut out a long strip of turf on the bank of the pool. The soil, which smelled nice, was of a rich reddish brown and showed up well against the green. It's a good thing one of us has some scent, said Polly. Well, don't keep on gassing about it, said Diggory. Come along. I want to see what's in one of the other pools. And Polly gave him a pretty sharp answer, and he said something even nastier in reply. The quarrel lasted for several minutes, but it would be dull to write it all down. Let us skip on to the moment at which they stood with beating hearts and rather scared faces on the edge of the unknown pool with their yellow rings on and held hands and once more said, one, two, three, go, splash. Once again, it hadn't worked. This pool, too, appeared to be only a puddle. Instead of reaching a new world, they only got their feet wet and splashed their legs for the second time that morning. If it was a morning, it seems to be always the same time in the, world, the wood between the worlds. Blast and botheration, exclaimed Diggory. What's gone wrong now? We put our yellow rings on all right. He said yellow for the outward journey. Now, the truth was that Uncle Andrew, who knew nothing about the wood between the worlds, had quite a wrong idea about the rings. The yellow ones weren't outward rings, and the green ones weren't homeward rings, at least not in the way he thought. The stuff of which both were made had come from the wood. The stuff in the yellow rings had the power of drawing you into the wood. It was the stuff that wanted to get you back to its own place, the in-between place. But the stuff in the green ring is stuff that is trying to get out of its own place so that a green ring would take you out of the wood into a world. Uncle Andrew, you see, was working with things he did not really understand. Most mag magicians are. Of course, Diggory did not realize the truth quite clearly either, or not till later. But when they talked it over, they decided to try their green rings on the new pool, just to see what happened. I'm game if you are, said Polly. But she really said this because in her heart of hearts, she now felt sure that neither kind of ring was going to work at all in the new pool. And so there was nothing worse to be afraid of than another splash. I am not quite sure that Diggory had not the same feeling. At any rate, when they had both put on their greens and come back to the edge of the water and taken hands again, they were certainly a good deal more cheerful and less solemn than they had been the first time. One, two, three, go, said Diggory, and they jumped. And of course, that's the end of chapter three. Talk to you next time. Bye.